Deanna Lowenstein, Child and Family Therapist from Toronto, Canada. And I'm very pleased to welcome a special guest to my YouTube channel, Greg Lubomiv, from, uh, also from Canada. Greg is here to share uh, one of his very creative family play therapy techniques called What Would They Say? Thank you so much, uh, Leanne. It's a pleasure to have an opportunity to demonstrate this. One of the very common issues that we work uh, with families on is communication. It probably is a basic one that hits almost all families. And I was looking for a number of ways to help to generate that, uh, an easier way for families to begin to communi communicate with each other, to know each other better, and came up with this activity. And basically, it's asking uh, a number of questions that are on a piece of paper, on, um, on little, uh, cut up the bulletin board, uh, use scraps, whatever it is. So you, you think about 10 questions that you want to stimulate some, some interesting things around the families, you know, who feels angry the most, um, what's something that I would like different in the family, what's something that I'd like different about myself, and some fun things, and about 10, make a funny face, uh, or, or um, uh, what's my favorite food, what's my favorite color, and then the family, whether it's three members, four members, five members, would gather around a game. And what you want to do is use a game that has lots of turns happening in quick succession. So these are some examples I brought forward. Carpet of dentist is a great one. Uh, so you, you push down a tooth until it closes its mouth and each person takes a turn. Uh, the uh, pile of penguins and it's a balancing act where you put a penguin on and if it doesn't fall then you would take your turn. Pop up pirates, another great example, um, you would push sword in and the pirate doesn't pop up, you would take your turn. Same thing with Jenga. And there's dozens and dozens of games out there like that mm -hmm. that therapists would have in their rendition or you okay. can find more. So you'd have some prepared questions and the family sitting around and, and so I'm going to imagine that I am uh, a 10 year old child and you're the mom mm -hmm. and dad's sitting here, he's out of view of the camera right now. And, uh, and so I take it, we're playing crocodile dentist, I'll take my turn and I pick up the first question and it says, the person, the person who can make me laugh the most is, and um, I'm gonna think for a moment. Okay, I have an answer. Now, you as mom are gonna write down, so everyone has a paper and pen, mm -hmm. you're gonna write down what you think I'm gonna say. Mm -hmm. And dad's gonna write down what he thinks I'm gonna say. Or so sister. I'm thinking it's sister. Mm -hmm. uh, she makes you laugh all the time. Mm -hmm. And you might answer that correctly, it's sister, but you might think it's, a neighbor or it's you or it's a dog mm -hmm. and then we uh, we would ask um, I as a therapist would say okay what's your answer Johnny I said my sister mm -hmm. okay mom dad mm -hmm. sister what did you say mm -hmm. wow you guys all got it right or mom you said the dog <laughs> so let's talk about that and then boy actually I say you know what mom you're kind of right the dog actually makes me the la laugh the most mom. so the next person goes so mom goes and then you get a question. So my question is, the feeling I would like to have less of is? So you would think okay. about that, and now we're gonna think, hmm, what would mom like less of? Probably mad. That's what I think as a son. Dad might say less jealous. Mm -hmm. uh, daughter might say less um, nervous. Okay, and you might say something totally different. So again, it gives a chance to really understand where a person's coming from and for you to get a chance to hear how we might be thinking and to correct uh -huh. some of the narratives that we have about the family members who we have. Now also what you can do, after you play it a couple of times and you've answered a question, uh, what you're feeling, we all guessed it wrong, mm -hmm. right? And it might say, well, why would you say mom would like less anger? How do you see that? So you can actually go into a little bit deeper discussion. I wouldn't do that the first couple of times mm -hmm. I used the game. You want to keep it nice and safe and comfortable. Mm -hmm. And that's why some of the questions are, my favorite food is, right. my favorite color is. Right. A little bit easier, softer mm -hmm. to get at. Um, the uh, uh, My favorite subject in school. And that could be moms and dads too. So when your mom and dad were in school, mm -hmm. what do you think their favorite subject was? Mm -hmm. Something that was probably never talked about. Right. But you actually get a chance to share and perhaps you say something like English and they say, hey, that's mine too, Mom. I also like English. Mm -hmm. Or you might ask him, what was your least favorite? Mm -hmm. Math. Oh, I hate math mm -hmm. too. And now we have something in common. So it's a nice way to really get that communication going mm -hmm. 
One of the things about playing the game is resistance goes down mm -hmm. when you're doing that. The fun element goes up, mm -hmm. and you're you're already into a relationship. As soon as you're playing a game, you're interacting and you're relating to others. Mm -hmm. And not only that, but you're learning about each other mm -hmm. and sharing information in a safe way. So at the end of the game, uh, how might you process this with the family? As, as a therapist, as the family therapist, how might you process it? There's a the wide end? range of ways to do that. In the beginning, I wouldn't process it a lot. We, were, we just had some fun, we learned a little bit about each other, and now let's go on to talking about whatever the issue was that they want to address, mm -hmm. and come back to it, play it a couple of times, and dig a little deeper. Mm -hmm. uh, then I might want to, when, when there's greater stability, when there's greater ability for the children not to feel judged, for example, or the parents say, why did you say that? Mm -hmm. And those are things you want to watch for. So you're going to say, no answer is a bad answer. Mm -hmm. Every answer is a good answer. And there's no judging of answers to say, that's not a good, you know, you shouldn't have said that. Mm -hmm. uh, or you should say this instead. So mm -hmm. these are rules you want to set in the front end mm -hmm. and reinforce with the softer questions. When they're getting it, then they're going to go a little deeper and process more and more as we would have that orientation with the family. Again, they're feeling especially the children feel a little bit safer. And there's a more predictable response that mom and dad are going to, uh, what I want to get them to, and my, my mom and say, that was a great answer. And that was a great answer too. Mm -hmm. And now there's a great conversation. So you know something, did you know that? Did you know that? Did you know that? So you're checking in and you're, you're really reinforcing, you know, one of the basic elements of, of strong families to know each other and to support each other. Right. And to accept the differences that, that exist between you. Not everybody's the same. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any tips for um, when you have a scenario where one family member is really resistant, doesn't want to participate? Yeah, there's a couple of there's a couple of, of ways of dealing with that. One of the simplest one is to allow it and say that's fine, but we'd like you to stay and watch. Mm -hmm. And what I would try and do is engage that child in a in a, in a more backdoor approach. And so as Johnny answers the question and mom and dad answered, say, what would, what would you have said, sister? Mm -hmm. uh, and she said, well, I would have said the dog. I know that he loves the dog. Mm -hmm. that, that's who makes him laugh the most. Mm -hmm. I say, wow, you know, that's, uh, that's great. So you know that, that's mm -hmm. good. Did you want to play the next round? And maybe she does. Mm -hmm. Sometimes kids need to see it a first time. Mm -hmm. And it takes them some time to warm up or to come in. Mm -hmm. they're, they're checking out myself. They're checking out how things are going to work with the family. Mm -hmm. They're watching the game. And I also want to make the game fun. That's the other thing. So, so you want to make it enticing. So I just say, okay, your turn. Next, say, okay, it's my turn. Mm. Which one am I gonna do? Which one am I gonna? Ah, got it. Yeah. And then Johnny gets his. Oh, Johnny, give me five. Okay, no problem. Let's start over. Okay, go again, Johnny. Oh, look at that. Give me five. Go again, Johnny. Right on, look at that. Okay, big pop for Johnny. Okay, now you're, here's, your, here's your car. So you really want to create some life and energy. Okay. And that's what's going to draw people into wanting to right. engage. Right, okay. lovely. Well, it's such a wonderful, um, playful, engaging technique that really, I think, helps families communicate um, and gain insight into each other. Uh, so it's just a, a wonderful family play therapy technique. And thank you, Greg. Oh, you're very welcome.